Hey, to celebrate my new book around persistence layer, I got several questions to answer right now. So this video is a Q&A session based on your comments and your questions. Hello you, my name is Otavio Santana and welcome to my YouTube channel, the channel for who want to become a better software engineer and software architect. So if you want to learn more around software architecture, soft design, Java, persistence layer, NoSQL database, subscribe in my channel and participate to become an ultimate software engineer. Okay, let's start the first question. Why it is essential to use DTO or data transfer object? The first reason is isolation between your entity and anything else. For example, imagine that I do have a, a user entity that has several critical informations, such as passwords or any credential that you don't want to expose. What you can do, you can use a DTO to explicitly define what you can expose in that API. Of course, you can use annotation to ignore on the serialization. Another point is to version. Imagine that I have version 1, version 2, and version 3. And I don't want to impact my entity or my domain with these chains. So, with DTO, I can make it possible. Uh, the best strategy to performance the conversion between DTO and domain entity is using a framework such as MapStruct. I wrote an article on uh, this one, DTO, hipster or deprecated, that will cover more details on that. So, in this case, I used both REST API and JSF, but you can use it with JAR. GRPC and any integration that needs you to move some information outside your domain. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. With the design of Java records, does the Lombok lib lose its meaning? No. Lombok is way beyond what you can do with Java records. For example, Java records you can only handle with immutable class and immutable classes. You can explore data domain de design, of course, but that is it. If your DTO is immutable, it makes sense. However, with Lombok, you can create multiple classes with these accessories. And you have more annotation than data. You have builder that enables builder partner with a single notation. You do have log, you have not new and so on. To explain a little bit more about this and the difference between Java record and Lombok, I have two videos. One explain why I don't enjoy Lombok in a soft design perspective. And the second one is the difference between Java record and Lombok. Okay. The third question in a Microsoft architecture, what do I do if I need to do a join between different microservice tables? Tables. Um, you can do an orchestration process. You can orchestrate different calls for different service, join these calls in the application layer, and return to the user. Of course, there are several concerns about that. The first one is the consistency because there's no guarantee of the consistency doing this way. Another perspective is uh, the complexity of doing that. And perhaps you are doing that because there is a missing or a bug inside your domain design. You might have some bundle context problem, okay? So it's an opportunity to, of course, if it makes sense, to review your architecture, your domain, and check if maybe those microservices, instead of do a join, might return to become a monolith application, okay? So it's worth to read the bundle context article by Matt Fowler. 
and review your uh, review the DDD book as well. The last question for today is when to use each NoSQL database type, document, column, graph, key value, time series, and when to use relational database. I have a video covering that, but briefly, key value to user uh, sessions and cache and things like that. Column you can do to store events, logs, and so on. Document to any unstructured information to mobile API, for example, especially because document in general, they are a schemeless database. And graph uh, to fraud detections, to, to recommendation engine, and so on. So those are super valid. And it does not mean that relational database is deprecated. It's a huge solution, super mature solution, and it's still valid to use, okay? When to use relational database, you can use, for example, when you need a ACID compliant, compliance. For example, you need to have transactions in operations. Those are good scenarios to use relational database, okay? That's all for today. Hopefully, I got your question answered. If you do have more questions, if you have some thoughts about these questions, please let me know in the comments. That's all for today, and bye.